from every form of unrighteousness, from every form of immorality. Know his will. Know what he wants. The Lord made a way for him. That is what he wants to do. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God bless you for joining me for divine instructions to live by. And I am Pastor Taiwo Uredele Utubi. When we are talking about divine instructions, we are talking about God's instructions to his children, God's commands to his children. He wants them to know his will so they can do them. And when we do the will of God, when we obey him, he blesses us. And one of those instructions is for us to be generous. Be generous. God wants you to be generous. I read um, 1 Timothy chapter 6 from verse 17 to verse 19. The Bible says, As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. Tell them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that, which is truly life. Now, this instruction is not just um, to the rich. God's word is to all his children, whether rich or not very rich. And it's not about how much you give. It's about being generous. It's about being rich in good works. At your level, God wants you to do good. God wants you to be generous as we read in that verse. God wants you to be ready to share. I was talking with someone recently. She, the person is still trusting God for some things. But I told her that even though you are still trusting God for some things, but God wants you to be generous. Because sometimes when we are trusting God for things, we are like, oh, it's not enough. So I cannot do anything. I can't even give to God. I can't give to people. It's not enough for me. That's the mentality of people. That's how some people think. Yes, it may not be enough. And I understand but the word of God is clear about all these things. God wants us to continue to, from the little you have, share, give. Give to God. Do what you need to do for God, for people. It's not about how much, but it's about your heart. And then our God is also a giver. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and all of that. That is the nature of God. That's the God we are serving. And as his children, children who have his nature. It might not be so easy, but God wants, um, God wants you, us to give. And uh, he, I'm encouraging you today, reminding you of this word of God. So that you can be blessed by God. The Bible says, uh, that scripture that I read, for, um, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. It says, don't put your hopes on what you have. Don't put your hopes on your treasures. Don't put your hopes on your connections, your money, what you have. Let your hopes be in God who gives generously. God, does not, God doesn't want you to give out of fear or guilt. It's not, um, it's not about, oh, if I don't do it, um, maybe well, I, I just have to do it. The Bible says that God, want, God loves a cheerful giver. And when we understand why we need to give, it becomes easier for us. When I realize that it's for my own good, if I give, God, God blesses me in return. And this is another thing you need to know. Whatever you do for God is never in vain. Serving God is never in vain. Giving to God is never in vain. When you obey God, it's never in vain. God blesses us back. God blesses us who obey him. So when we give to God, God, does, God loves a cheerful giver. God wants you to do it and he blesses you in return. And the Bible says in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8. Um, let's uh, each one give as he purposes in his heart not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver 
and then verse, verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, so that you will always have sufficiency in all things, and that you may have an abundance for every good work. God wants to bless you so that and so that you will have an abundance for every good work. And if it's working for me, I can assure you that it will work for you. Try God and um, try, uh, obey, do these things. Put your trust in God and you'll find that it will work for you. God wants us to follow his example and uh, be generous and kind. Then uh, in Luke chapter 6 verse 38, the Bible gives us a, a, another promise. The Bible gives us a promise. The Bible says, give and it will be given unto you. That's another the instruction again. Give. It's an instruction. And it will be given to you. That's a promise. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, are running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Let me say that um, it's important that to be led by God in all things. We need to give. But at the same time, don't just give anyhow. Be led by God. Be led by the Spirit of God. Ask the Holy Spirit, what should I do? How do I manage my finances? And, uh, and if I'm giving, how much should I give? What should I do? And all of that. Be sure that you are led by God. Don't give um, foolishly in a way that can affect you and your family negatively. So that your family, you don't get into financial crisis. But when you, when you are led by God, God will lead you and you will know what to do and you will reap the reward. God will bless you and you can never you can never lack. Um, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible says that God has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. There's a purpose for your life. And there's a purpose for what you have, whatever you have, your intelligence, your ability, even your money, everything, there is a purpose. And God wants us to use what all that we have, all that he has blessed us with. He wants us to use them to his glory. See God as your source. Yes, you are the one working for your money and you work hard for your money to earn that money. But at the same time, you need to realize that God is your source. Without him, you can do nothing. If God had not been on your side, where would you be? If God had not been on your side, you might be working hard, but might not have much to show for it. But you work and you are being blessed. You need to give glory to God. You need to acknowledge the, pre the presence of God, the, the power of God in your life and be generous and obey him. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, the Bible says, makes us know that there's nothing that we have that we have not received from God. That's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. Who makes you different from other people? What do you have that you have not received from God? Nothing. And if you are different from other people, if you have been blessed, God is your source. So this is to encourage you today to be generous and um, see how God will bless you in return and um, let me also say a little concerning tithe and offering a lot is being said on social media concerning tithe and offering so many things but I will just remind you of the word of God the issue of tithe and, or giving offering is a settled matter with me and it's a settled matter with my family my children it's a settled matter. It's in the Bible. God wants us to do it and we do it. And God is blessing us. You cannot obey God and not be blessed in return. Concerning tithe and offering, the word of God is very clear in Malachi chapter 3. Irrespective of whatever you might be hearing about it, I want to encourage you. Don't get confused and don't be discouraged. Put your trust in God. If you find it in the Bible, do it. It's about God. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. 
But you say, in what way have we robbed you? The word of God says in tithes and offerings and all of that. And God says, uh, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuild the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. And all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So don't um, be confused. Get established in the word of God. Do what God wants you to do and it shall be well. And I pray for you today that as you obey God, you will not lose your reward. I pray that your needs will be met. I pray that God will help you so that you will have sufficiency in all things. As you obey him, as you, be, 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 as you begin to give, as you are generous to God and to his people. In Jesus' name, God bless you.